peace, peace, peace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus to you all. Once again, we welcome you, the whole world, entirely created by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the fullness of his time. We are beaming live and direct from our home in Mutare, Malikaland, Zimbabwe, Sadak region in Africa. I am named the Pastor Tendai Allen Mukua and my beautiful wife Mie Chino Emigres Mukua Mi Karenje. We are a couple ministers of God. We have three great children, two girls and a boy. We are pastors at Evangelical Assemblies of Christ International EACI under the leadership of our own Apostle, General Overseer Peter Makombe and family, and Deputy General Overseer Sango and family, with other fellow overseers, pastors, elders, deacons, deaconesses, and fellow members. Once again, we greet you all, EACI, wherever you are. We also greet you, the body of Christ, believers, in the name of Jesus Christ. And even those who are watching and listening to us, for the first time or for the several times, we thank you for focusing your attention from your busy schedule to hear the word of God and to fellowship with us as City of Champions Assembly where we fellowship. Because of this uh, epidemic, you know we are at home, safe in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. So we shall not fear any enemy, any epidemic, any pandemic, any disease. We know he is in control and he is seated at the right hand side of the Father interceding for us. We also want to welcome our own uh, president uh, of this nation and uh, his entire leadership, the leadership of Manika and province and all other leaders, even business leaders, community leaders. We say once again, we love you by the love of God, our relatives, our friends, our neighbors. We love you by the love of God. So welcome to our first Sunday live service. I know most of you, uh, you will get this later on on YouTube. You also get this later on on audios. And you circulate the name of Jesus Christ and let him be glorified. Let him manifest in our lives from now and forever. So we shall start our session uh, with uh, two prayer points. The first prayer point uh, is containing confessions of our sins. I'm taking my reading from Psalm 51 verse 1. Psalm 51, verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had gone in to Bathsheba, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So we want to confess our sins, so that according to thy love, loving kindness of God and according to his multitude of tender mercies, he will blot out our transgressions as his children and according to his mercy, he will have mercy upon us. Let us pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you this morning. We glorify your holy name. We lift your name on high. We honor your name, Father. Father God, we come to you. Have mercy on me. According to your multitude of tender mercies, according to your loving kindness, you have mercy on me. Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. The transgressions of my mindset. The transgressions of my thinking patterns. The transgressions of my speech. The transgressions of my communications. The transgressions hidden in my heart. Blot them out by your blood, Jesus Christ. Erase them by the finished powerful work of the cross of Calvary. You have mercy upon me, Lord. Even Baba, as we broadcast this live and direct dead in heaven, Baba in heaven, Papa in heaven, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. 
We have mercy on us. Cleanse us with your own Yisho. Make us pure. Make us in right standing with you. Blot out our transgressions according to your mouthy tender mercies. We have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Alone we fell. Aloko yama jaktonda zakati yarushmanda. Alone we fell, my Rabba Sonda. Alone we fell, my Lord. Alone we fell. We need your mercy. We have your mercy. Even during these trying times of Corona. Corona COVID D19. Have mercy, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on the doctors. Have mercy on the nurses. Have mercy on the medical fraternity. Have mercy on the World Health Organization. Have mercy on the whole world. Have mercy on Africa. Have mercy on Zimbabwe. Have mercy on Manikaland province. Have mercy on Mutare. Have mercy on City of Champions Assembly. Have mercy on the discipleship class worldwide. Have mercy on the body of Christ. Have mercy on every member. Have mercy on those who are watching, on those who are listening. Have mercy on us as we minister not ourselves, but we minister Jesus Christ and Him crucified and us as servants, as messengers, as tools of you. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Forgive us our trespasses. You are just and faithful. And if you forgive us all our sins through the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to go on to our last uh, uh, prayer point. Uh, Psalm 107, verse 1. Psalm 107, verse 1. Psalm 107, verse 1. Psalm 107, verse 1. I shall read King James Version once again. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. The Lord is good. He will heal us of this virus. The Lord is good. He will revive us once again. The Lord is good. He will make us again have fellowship together in one place with one accord. The Lord is good. He shall see us through. Let us thank God for his good and let us always know that his mercy endured it forever. Not a disease, not a calamity, but only his mercy endured it forever. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you because you are faithful. We thank you because your mercy endured it forever. We thank you because, Father God, this is but just a temporal moment. Father God, where we are fighting, Father, this epidemic, we know this is a finished battle. It is a finished process. It is a finished war. We are winners through the blood of the Lamb. We are winners through the blood of the Lamb. Let your name be praised. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be honored. Father God, as you parted the Red Sea, you can still part this virus. Father God, as you parted Jordan River, you can still part this virus. Father God, as you rain the food in the desert, you can still rain health in this era. As you, Father God, let water come out of your heart drop, you can let good health come out of this epidemic. Father God, you are a God of the impossibilities. You are a specialist in dead matters. That time you arrived before the tomb of Lazarus and you called him out. You can still call your world to life because you are a God of all life. You are the resurrection, you are the life. We worship you, we praise you. Father God, we bring all glory to you. Let not the world see us. Let us hide behind your cross and let the world see Jesus Christ. Let not the world see us, but let the world see Jesus Christ. Let us not speak as your mere servant, but Holy Spirit, take over and speak. 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 Speak to all four corners of the world. Speak to those in hospitals. Speak to those in surgeries. Speak to those in quarantine situations. Speak to those who are isolated. Speak to those who are unreachable by phones, by air, by whatever means of transport and communication. Father God, reach out to us. Grant us hope. Grant us encouragement. Grant us, Father God, a good thinking pattern. Father God, keep our leaders. Father God, keep the medical fraternity. Father God, keep the body of Christ. Father God, we worship you. We praise you. Keep our families intact wherever they are in the four corners of the world. 
Give them, my Lord, for the sake of your name. Bring all glory to your name. Ramusatara Lushia Manga Suka. Take all the glory, my Lord. Take all the glory, my Jesus. I keep our seniors and our leaders. I keep our overseers and all those in authority. Father God, we bow down in humble adoration. We worship your name, my Father. Keep my family, Jesus. Pick our media team, Jesus. Keep our media team, Jesus. We bring all glory to you. Our workmates, our college mates, our schoolmates, our neighbors, my Jesus. Our communities, our cities, our towns, our rural areas, our places, our farms. Oh God, our industries. Take care of them, my Lord. Father God, especially your nation, Italy. Remember Italy, Jesus. Have mercy on Italy. Have mercy on Italy. Have mercy. Father God, your mercy endureth forever. We have waited for your mercy. We are waiting for your mercy. Even as we teach and explain your word. Holy Spirit, have mercy. We rely on your mercy to open our lips and to fill our mouths. Your mercy is all we want. Through the precious name of your Son. Amen. Ah, uh, beautiful. We want to thank the Lord uh, for this time of intercession, for this time of uh, worshiping the Lord. How was it, uh, my dear wife? Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. So now we proceed uh, to our Bible readings, uh, the Bible readings of today. The word of God say, the flower may blossom, but it gets dry, and it is gathered, and it is burned. The green may grow, the grass may grow green, and tend to be very, very nice. But again, it will wither, be dried up, and be gathered, and be burned. But only the word of God remains green, and ever green, and ever fresh. So, over to you, my lovely wife. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2, verse 1. Men shall not live on bread alone. But by every way that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So I want to hear the word of God today. Uh, Joel chapter 2. We are going to read verse 21. And we also jump to verse 25 up to verse 27. I shall start reading. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. I will say that again. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Let's go to verse 25 up to 27. So I will restore you, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust is eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I send among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god who has dwelled wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame then you shall know that i am in the midst of israel i am the lord your god and there is no other my people shall never be put to shame amen let's quickly go to zachariah chapter 10. zachariah chapter 10 verse 6 Zechariah chapter 10 verse 6 I shall read I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph I will bring them back because I have mercy on them I will, they shall be as though I had not cast, I had not cast them aside for I am the Lord their God and I will hear them Hallelujah. Amen. We go to Amen. John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the gift of the day called today. 
We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of families. We thank you for the gift of your word, O oh God. We thank you this morning for gathering us before your table, that you may feed us with your holy word, my God. We want to thank you, O oh God, for the gift of Jesus Christ, that you gave to us, O oh God. We want to thank you for your love, so you greatly so much loved us, O oh Jesus. We want to thank you, O oh God, that you loved us and died for us, Jesus Christ, even when we were sinners. Before we even knew you, O oh God, you gave us your son, that we may be saved. And your word tells us, O oh God, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not die but have eternal life. Father, I want to thank you for the gift of eternal life. You gave us, O oh God, free of charge. You gave us, O oh God, because of the blood that was shed on the cross. Father, I want to thank you for the precious blood that we acknowledge even today. It speaks a better word in our lives, oh God. We want to thank you, oh God, amid these all calamities, amid this, this situation, oh God, amid this desperation, my Father. We thank you this morning for your word tells us, oh God, that when an enemy comes in like a flood, oh God, you raise the standard. We want to thank you for raising standards in our lives during this time of coronavirus. We want to thank you, my Father, for raising the standard of the world, for raising the standard of every continent, oh God, that we may experience your peace. As you tell us in your word, oh God, that peace you give to us, not as the world giveth to us, but you give us peace that surpasses all human understanding. My Father, I pray for peace to every nation in this world. Father, I pray for the, for, for the peace of God that humans will not understand. The peace that you give us amid these diseases, amid this illness, oh God, amid this even lockdown, my Father, we are not desperate, oh God. For you tell us we are not, I am with you, and you know you are with us, oh God. We thank you this morning as we are set to hear you speaking in our situation. Thank you, my Father, for giving us hope. Thank you, my Father, for giving us confidence. Thank you, my Father, for protecting us. We thank you for thousands of your angels, oh God, that are, that are guarding all the children of God that believe in you, that are guarding them against every evil that may fall upon us, my Father. I want to thank you for the edge of protection around us, oh God. As your word tells us that when we dwell in the secret place of the most high. We are safe, oh God. As you say that you will not live a deadly disease killing us, oh God, but you cover us and protect us. Thank you for covering every nation. Thank you for covering every country. Thank you for covering every president. Thank you for covering the body of Christ that we may be safe under the shadow of your wings. Thank you, my Father, this morning. Give us expected hearts to hear your word, O oh God, that you may uplift us, O oh God, that you may give us hope, for we know hope does not disappoint, for we know hope does not fail, and our hope is anchored in Christ Jesus alone, who, who was nailed on the cross, that we may be redeemed and adopted as your sons. We thank you, my Father, this morning. We give you our glory. We raise your name above, for we are not given any other name that we may be saved, but the name of Jesus Christ, that whoever believeth in it will be saved. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let all the saints say, Amen. 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 Wonderful prayer. Right, today, uh, once again, we are getting our Bible teaching on a topic called the mystery of time. The mystery of time. One thing we need to understand is that as a ministry, we are in the season whereby we are working as a ministry, ESCI, under the national theme, unfolding the mysteries of Christ. And as it's an assembly seat of champions, we are under the theme, great and mighty things. So what is a mystery? Some of you, maybe they don't know what is a mystery. Maybe in short, a mystery is a secret thing. A hidden thing a thing we do not know a thing which is not to our exposure that's why you find in Jeremiah 33 verse 3 the Bible says call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you do not know 
these great and mighty things we do not know are what we can call secrets. So in the bosom of God, in the incomprehensibility of God, there is great and mighty things which we do not know. Even the cure, even the end and the finish and the completion of this virus, it's a mystery to us because we do not know how it will finish, when it will finish, how it came. But I want to tell you it was prophetically spoken in the word that when we call upon the name of Jesus, when we pray unto Jehovah, he will open our mind, he will open our hearts, he will open our eyes, and the illumination of the Holy Word will come unto us, and then we will know these great and mighty things. So a mystery, these are hidden body of truth, a hidden body of knowledge, a compendium of divine, godly possibilities and accesses only known and only formidable to the mind of God. So the mystery of time, these are the known things in regards to time. We understand there are two types of time. We have time according to God, which is the chaos. And you have got time according to man, which is chronos, like what is on my watch here. All hemispheres has got different times. This is the chronos time. So we are speaking about these hidden mysteries, these hidden things about time. You understand from the paragraphs of scripture in the New Testament, in the Gospels, right, John 10 verse 10, the Bible says the thief, who is the devil, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief also represents one who does not understand the things of God? A con man, a false prophet, a false teacher, a false believer, one who worships other gods, none other than Jesus Christ. He's also a thief. What does he do? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ right now is saying, Jesus Christ is saying, I am come. Ah. I want you to hear the tenses here. He is not saying, I was going to come. He is not saying, I will come. He is talking present tense. So even in us here, during this epidemic, Jesus Christ is saying, I am come. Ah, uh, what a lovely promise. What a lovely point of encouragement. What a lovely point of strengthening us. Jesus is saying, I am come. I am come. I am come. So I am come is an expression. And each time is current. So we need to understand that Jesus is saying, I am come that they may have health, that they may have breakthrough, that once again they can converge, they can gather. I am come so that they can go back to their work. I am come so that they can go back to school. I am come so that they can still gather and preach and hear the word. I am come so that trips can be rejuvenated. I am come so that everything will be restored. I have come for revival. I am come for this restoration. I am come for renewal. I am come to redress the situation. I love this tense in King James Version. I am come. So according to Jesus, he is coming daily into, a, into one his life. To everyone who believes, Jesus is coming. This is the mystery. This is the hidden thing here. Jesus is coming every time wherever you are in bangladesh in mongolia in australia in peru in uruguay in bolivia whether you are in new zealand you are in a kalahari desert you are in algeria whether you are in botswana you are in zambia you are in germany you are in russia you are in, 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 in any mm -hmm. island god is saying i am come that is the mystery of time yes according to history according to archaeology we can say Jesus Christ came 2020 years ago and what he did on the cross is now history. But I want to tell you divine spiritual thing, the mysteries of God is saying, Jesus, I am come to restore us, to revive us, to heal us, to make us well and nourish us in the name of Jesus. 
This is the mystery of time. You hear Joel 2.25. Wow. Joel 2.25. Let's quickly rush there. Joel 2.25. Once again, you see this mysterious, this mystery hidden. Right. On verse 21, God says, Fear not, all land, all global village, all the universe, all the cosmos, all the earth, all people, fear not. Be glad, be happy. Don't be sad. <laughs> Don't be sorrowful. Rejoice. Be excited. For the Lord Jesus will do great things. That's why Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Jeremiah has already prophesied and said unto us, Call upon me, pray. And I will answer you. I will respond to you. I will react to you. I will come down to you. That's why Jesus, when he comes, he say, I am come. Oh, I feel the anointing here. Because he was referring to what major prophet Jeremiah had already said. That when you call upon me, I will answer. When we call upon God, he will come. He will appear. That's why he says, according to the mystery of time, I am come. Even you see in one paragraph where Jesus was asked, are you greater than Abraham? Jesus, what did he say? He said, yes, I, I, yes I'm not greater. He said, before Abraham, I am. Meaning according to his time, he is ever present. That's why the Bible says he is an ever present help in trouble. He is an ever present as help, help in trouble. He is ever present assistant in trouble. He is valuable in us. Even right now I want to tell you the world. Jesus Christ is ever ready to help us. Jesus Christ is ever ready to assist us. He is a suitable helper. He is a meet a helper to us. He is a fit helper to us. Glory be to God. May someone say Amen. amen may someone say amen. amen so he will come and do great things he will come he's coming to do a great healing he's coming to do a great revival he's going to sweep over the whole land and grant us nourishment one again make us walk in the land of milk and honey because he is a promise keeper he is a promise keeper he is a way maker he is a healer he is Jehovah's Rapha, the one who heals us Oh my Amen. God. Amen. Verse 25. I will restore to you the years that the locust is eaten. I just want Mama to read once again verse 25. There is a way he has uh, uh, spoken about this. The, 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 the Bible he says, I will restore to you the years that the locust is eaten. I want you to read verse 25 once again. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust is eating, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I send among you. Amen. I'm interested with the way the locust are described. There's what is called a chewing locust, mm. a consuming locust, yes. and a chewing locust, Crawling consuming locusts. locusts and a crowning locust. Yes. This is the way these swarms, these families of locusts, these families of demonic consumers, demonic eaters are described by Joel, a small prophet Joel. He says they are consuming, mm -hmm. they are chewing, yes. they are crawling. Yes. But I want you to, 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 to discover and to see and to get your eyes opened and my eyes also opened by the holy spirit yes. what happens when chewing locusts come when consuming locusts come i want to see what happens the what happens in joel 2 25 is exactly what happened in joel 10 in john 10 10. Mm. Mm. joel 2 25 what happened there spiritual physical is what happened in joel 10 10 spiritual mm. Physically, in Old Testament, in Joel, we are getting God sending out physically locusts, visible, seen, crawling on the ground, chewing and eating the plants. That was physical. It was tangible. It was contactable. It was seeable. People could actually touch the locusts. Some would actually maybe later on dry, kill them, uh, dry them, cook them, salt them, and eat them. And, and maybe that's a way of trying to eradicate them. It was physical. But here we come to this battle in the New Testament. Battle when grace comes. Battle when Jesus comes. 
are walking on the land, walking on the ground. He says now, even though God has allowed the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I am come. Ah, that time you might have life and life in abundance. What is called the perishosa? Life in abundance, life exceedingly, abundantly, above what we expect, what we dream of, what we fantasize, whatever we think of. Jesus came to give life. He says, I am come. I am come. I am come. I am come. So I want you to see you how this uh, pattern of salvation is thrown all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The only theme and agenda there is God as a savior to man. Still in this epidemic, pandemic, in this uh, um, quarantine period, in this period of isolation, we have got only one agenda. Jesus, I am come to save us. Yes. He has come to save us. Yes. He says so in Luke. He says, I have come to seek mm -hmm. the lost. I have come to heal the sick. Mm -hmm. So he's here to heal us by the mystery of his time, of his stripes. We are healed by the mystery of the cross. We are healed by the mystery of the blood. We are healed. I want to tell you I'm here to present the better speaking blood other than the blood of Cain. The blood which speak at a better thing than the blood of Cain. And the intercessor, the mediator, the link man, the medium, and the media is Jesus Christ, the begotten beloved son of God who came from above down unto earth in humility to save us. Hallelujah. Mm. So in Joel, we are seeing what we can call a replay of what Jesus was going to do. Jesus was going to do a major restoration. And we see here in Joel 2, God is doing the same restoration. When Jesus came in on the scene in, on John 10, he is saying, I am come to give life and life in abundance. So regardless of the epidemic, regardless of this wave of sickness, ill health, infirmity, disease, and all these attacks, they see a Jesus Christ. The begotten beloved son of God who says I am come to have life, to give life, to issue life and life in abundance. So I want you to see one thing here. I know we are facing these 21 days all over the world. Some are now into 60 days. Uh, some are now into 30 days. Some are now going for 21 days. I know in our country, Zimbabwe, we are starting 21 days tomorrow. Some in the Sada region have already started. I want to encourage you through the person of the Holy Spirit, what he laid on my heart this morning. I know as people when we live on earth, even believers, even pastors, even men of God, even bishops and general overseers, people are worried about time. People are about worried about losing time. I know, and myself also, sometimes, people we are worried about losing time. This 21 days isolation, some people will say, what will then become of us? What would we eat? What would we drink? What would you wear? What will become of my project? My farm, my plot, my business, my career, my degree, my diploma, my certificate. What shall become of my passport, of my trip, of my journey, of my era? People are asking questions. But Jesus, when he came, Matthew chapter 6, he says, do not worry about all these things. Do not be anxious about all these things. The great apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, he also writes and says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Oh, I feel the anointing already. In everything, but in everything. Do not be anxious, Zimbabwe, about the 21 days isolation. Do not be anxious, Sadak region, about the quarantine period. Do not worry, Africa, about this period of isolation. Do not worry, the whole world about this period of isolation. God is saying in everything, including during the epidemic, we present our request in all to God. We give God what troubles us. We surrender to God what befalls us. 
we issue to God what is bogging our mind. We must not worry. We must not be anxious. I decree, I declare, anxiety is not our portion in Jesus' name. Worry is not our portion in Jesus' name. Sadness is not our portion in Jesus' name. Whatever the devil is trying to lure you to think that this 21 days, it's a period of death. I reverse that verdict. I reverse that agenda. The 21 days is a day of renewal. The 21 days is a day of going forward. We need to present our request in all unto God with the thanksgiving. Mm. With the faith. With the faith. With the faith. With the faith. We need to do this. With the faith. I want to tell you, Joel 2, there's a mystery of time. It now says on verse 25, I will restore you. Ah. Mm -hmm. The years. These chewing locusts they're stolen. Like, I want to be with you. I want you to be with you. I want you to be, listen, listen. God is saying during this period, I, God, will restore you the cosmos, the world, the global village, every individual quarantined in isolation. God is saying, I will restore the years. I want you to get this. I know because of these 21 days or because of this quarantine period ahead of us. I, I, I want you to get this. I know because of this quarantine period ahead of us, the world is worried. But look, we are checking here the mystery of time. God is saying, I have allowed the locusts to chew, to consume, to crawl. I have allowed COVID-19, but there's a mystery. There is a mystery. Listen to me. There's a mystery. God is saying, as we are thinking about the 21 days, we are thinking about things. We are thinking about goods. We are thinking about services. We are thinking about our properties, immovable and immovable. We are thinking about food, dry and uh, that is perishable. We are thinking about our health, what will become of our health. We are thinking about our education, our journeys, our careers, our hotels, our projects, our ministries. Mm -hmm. Are we together? We are thinking about things. But in Matthew 6.25, God says, do not be worried about these things. First, seek ye the kingdom of God. This 21 days, people are worried about things. I want to draw you back to joy. God sent the locust and it destroyed the things. <laughs> it destroyed the food. It destroyed the health. It destroyed the properties. And God did not say, I will restore the things. Because according to his spiritual system, according to the, his kingdom, according to the kingdom principles, according to the governing principles and the systems of heaven, and biblical laid down procedures, God does not restore things. God restores time. Mm, I feel the anointing already. God restores time. Why he restores time? He does not restore things. Because according to his laid down procedures, according to his laid down systems of heaven, things are not an issue. That's why he says in Matthew 6, 33, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that things will follow. So now, where do we get the time? Because the time is in his kingdom. When we seek his kingdom, we are seeking Jesus. Jesus who says in John 10, 10, I am come. So we don't seek things, we seek time. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to lose anyone here. I don't want to lose anyone here. Jesus says when he comes, when he says I am come, if you read Matthew chapter 1, verse 14 to 15, if you read Matthew chapter 1, I, I, I want us to go there. I want you to see this hidden mystery. Jesus says, oh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Mark, sorry, it's Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. It's Mark chapter 1. Right. And now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Verse 15. And he's saying that time is fulfilled. 
and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. That time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. That's why he says in Matthew 6, 33, don't seek after the things. Seek after the kingdom because the kingdom is the fulfillment of time of heaven. That's why you see God now is saying, I will restore to you the years. What is years? Years are made up of months. What makes months? Months are made up of weeks. What makes weeks? Weeks are made up of days. What makes days? Days are made up of hours. What makes hours? Hours are made up of minutes. What makes minutes? They are made up of seconds. What makes seconds? They are made up of split of seconds. So to us right now, we might lose goods, we might lose services, we might lose career, we might lose education, but that is not an issue according to God. Because when God wants to restore us, he doesn't bring things, he brings time. Because all this we are worried about, if we have time, we can get it. Ah, if you have time, you can access it. I want to tell you, dead people who are buried in the grave, no matter a scholarship for a degree comes, no matter a flight to whatever nation comes, no matter a sporting event comes in the world, they can no longer go there because the time on earth is finished. But as long as we have time on our side, I want to tell you, we have a future. That's why God says in Joel 2.25, I will restore time. So these 21 days is not an issue because God does not restore things. You know, you know I, I just want to say in vernacular. But my pastor did not think about the trikulus as you. 21 days, he does it in Garekumba. Trikulus as you, trikulus as Mary, trikulus as Shamari, trikulus as Matripsi, trikulus as production. But now we talk about even when Zimbabwe is shown a rimuno. I want to tell you clearly, and those who hear shown up. Time is not an issue because God does not replace Maria but Maria replaces us with the time. And as long as we are alive here on earth, we can still access money and money in abundance because he came to give us life and life in abundance. What does restore mean? Restore in Hebrew means shalom. Shalom. It's just like shalom but it's S-H-A-L-A-M. Shalom. This word has a root meaning of a reward. So God is saying, when we sacrifice this quarantine period, when we isolate ourselves and think we are losing, actually God will reward us. Now read Joel 2.25. And I, God, will reward. I want Mama again to read Joel 2.25, putting now the word reward. She's now putting now the word rewind. We want to hear this in the root meaning uh, context. Just read to Joel 2.25. I will rewind. Replace, restore with I will rewind. So, I will reward to you the years that the swarming locust is eating. Well done. Check here. So this time we are sacrificing by, by, by being indoors. This time we are saying lockdown. This time we are sacrificing, committing ourselves to being home, just like being caged in, being imprisoned, being incarcerated, being uh, dug deep down in the dungeon. God is saying that time, that time, because God is not a specialist of restoring things. He restores time. He restores time. So time, the meaning of restore is a reward, which means I, God, will reward you the time we have lost. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is the signal, the banner to say, God will reward us with this time. So, what does a reward mean? A reward is something given after a sacrifice, after a commitment. Hello? Something given after a commitment. Mm -hmm. So God will restore to us the years, the time. The devil, yes, stolen. Ah, my good Lord. My good Lord. My good Lord. My good Lord. What is now the years? This is the time. Time is called Shana. Right in Hebrew here. Shana. Which means division, measure, indication, mark, sign, lifetime. 
So God is saying, I will restore to you the division of time, the measure of time. This is what I've already explained as years, weeks, days, and hours. They are divisions, they are measures, they are indicators, they are marks, they are signs of time. It's like when it is 6 a.m. It's a mark, it's an indicator that it is in the morning. So time is shana, which means lifetime. So God is saying, the whole world remember, I will restore to you the lifetime. The lifetime. Let us not worry. We will be restored. You know, as I was praying, I was being given this thing. The 21 days of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. The 21 days. I know we have got so many people with the 21 days before them. And some are already in 21 days. The Spirit of God was impressing me upon these 21 days. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Then God said unto Daniel, Fear not. Again, the same way he said to Joel, he's, going, he's again saying to this major prophet, Fear not. For I, the first day, that you didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Ah, people of God, Marikosa. Let us just pray for a minute. Mazototo Rika Zanda Rabashuka Lelosa Branda Ziabraga Dosarabande. Holy Spirit, open my mind. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Holy Spirit, open our ears. We want to get this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Get this here. Ah, I feel the anointing already on my seat. God is saying to Daniel. Before you even proposed to fast, to pray and to fast for the next 21 days, the day you set your heart, the day you committed yourself that tomorrow we will start 21 days, that tomorrow we will start isolation, that tomorrow we will start the quarantine. My, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to tell you, the moment you said, I want to chasten myself, I want to afflict myself by prayer and fasting. I know we've got so many people in the body of Christ who have embarked on fast. That is great. That is okay. Let us go on. But I want to tell you this thing now. Before we even started our 21 days fast, our whatever period of fast, God has already heard our prayer. Because he says in his word, before you speak, I hear. Before you utter, I hear. Let us not forget your principles of God. So he's saying, I am come for thy ways. Actually, God is saying, I have descended. Like what he did in Exodus. In Exodus, in Exodus, in Exodus, he remember. He said to Moses, I have heard your cry. I have seen your affliction, but I am come. Oh, that's why even Moses, when he was sent to Pharaoh, God, Moses said to God, whom then will I say, he sent me. Then God said, tell them, I am he sent me. So this is the I am who is saying to Daniel, before you fasted for interpretation and understanding of COVID-19 and eradication and deletion and erasure and rubbing off and finishing of COVID-19, I want to tell you the whole world, me, God in, he in heaven, I am come. This is the same thing John said when he was speaking about Jesus. Jesus said, I am come to give life. I want to present to you Jesus Christ, who is the I am, who I am. The I am has come. I speak to you the whole world. The I am has come. The I am is here. The I am has arrived. He has come to give life and life to abundance. We banish deaths. We banish further contamination. We banish further pollution. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I am is around. I am. Yes, come. I am come. Ah, this is exciting. I am yes, come. Let us just analyze this and then we will we, 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 we help it out. Now, when you go now to Daniel, before he fasted, he selected fast. He is a partial fast. God had already had him. So before we are quarantined, it's very good to be quarantined so that we, do, we stop this pollution of each other. But I want to tell you, before the quarantine of men, God has already quarantined Kofi D19 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And it is so. All is hidden in the mystery of time. All is hidden in the mystery of time. 
Even when you read Daniel chapter 2. Right, I'm winding up here. Daniel chapter 2, verse 16. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that you would give him time and that you would show the king the interpretation. Daniel wanted some extra days that you would pray to God, that you would get the dream and you would get the interpretation of the dream from God. So, these 21 days, ladies and gentlemen, youths and all children and all the aged, wherever you are, even the medical fraternity, hear the word of Jesus. We have been given these 21 days as Daniel was given time. And God showed him the dream and God showed him the interpretation. I decree, I declare, as we are quarantined and isolated from each other, I declare, I decree, I pronounce, I proclaim, I charge, I order by the apostolic and prophetic mandate of Jesus Christ and by the finished work of the cross, we are going to interpret this disease. We are going to get the cure and we are going to kick it out of our houses by the name of Jesus. Kick it out of our streets by the name of Jesus. Kick it out of our spiritual world by the name of Jesus. Your days are numbered COVID-19. Jesus, I am come. This, this is the mystery of time. Daniel desired time and everything was on his side. Number two, Jesus coming. Galatians 4.4. Galatians 4 4. Galatians 4 4. I want to see the midst of time where someone is worried. Why are we quarantined? Why are we isolated? No, don't worry. There are mysteries. There are secrets. There are truths which happen when time is made to determine. Right, Galatians 4 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, ah. Uh, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law in order to abolish the law because he's the fulfillment of the law and to set us right on the course of righteousness to the glory of Jehovah in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Time in the fullness of time. So no matter the 21 days in the fullness of time, time is a determinant, time is a factor, time is a cause, time is a reason Christ to come. And that's why we are quarantined. It's the reason that we deal with this thing once and for all. As it was with Daniel and the grace and the anointing of God, may it be upon our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is why you find John 19.30. John 19.30. Christ Jesus cried on the cross. It is finished whatever was troubling human time spiritual time it was addressed and brought to the attention of jesus christ and it was made a veto there was made a vow there was made a resolution a motion that certain whatever you did from the garden of eden by the reason of this finished work of the cross i stop you i say it is finished it is deleted it is quarantined it is isolated mm. But I want to, as I finish, I want you to see this. John chapter 2, verse 4. John chapter 2, verse 4. I want you to see this. The, the, you know, the, the, this is a mystery of time. This is a giant uh, compendium of possibilities of God. John chapter 2, verse 4. This is the start of the ministry of Jesus. This is his first scene and venue and the place of the first miracle. Mm -hmm. on, on the cross of Calvary, he said, it is finished. That was the last spiritual, divine, supernatural miracle he did unto the spiritual world. That you look at, if anyone believes, you're finished. So if anyone believes in Jesus, coronavirus, you're finished. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look here. John chapter 2 verse 4, what did he say? Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. So, Jesus, there was a time when he could say, my time has not yet come. And there was a period he said on the cross, it is finished. Meaning you are saying, whatever the devil has done in this time, I am going to restore, as Joel said. Whatever the battle he has done in the spiritual realm, as a king of Persia and king of Greece, it is finished. So coronavirus, whatever you have done in the spiritual world, world, which is manifesting in the physical world, I decree to you that time of Jesus is full and you are finished in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's why in the time of Jesus, 
when he said those words on the cross, John 19, 30. This is what is emphasized and reiterated by the great apostle of our time, Apostle Paul. When we write to the Colossians church, chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, he said by the work of the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ blotted out, erased, wiped out, rubbed off, purged, put an end, finished, destroyed the handwriting, the rules, the ordinances, the certificates, the charges, the power of the devil and his demons and everything that was hostile to us. That is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Everything hostile to us right now. I turn your eyes to the finished work of the cross of Calvary. You were finished and you are still finished to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the same principle which was given to Jeremiah when he was called in Jeremiah chapter 1 that you will uproot, you will throw down, you will destroy and put upside down the works of the devil. This is the same mandate Jesus Christ was given First John chapter 3. Verse 8b, to destroy the works of the devil and to put the devil in COVID under our feet. The mystery of time. In the fullness of time, COVID will be history and is history. So I want to tell you what happened on the cross in conclusion. Jesus Christ glory ruled over, triumphed, won over, conquered, spoiled, overcame, shattered, and scattered. The rulers, authorities, principalities, powers, and bad spirits, including COVID-19. So, child of God, listener, believer, who is watching me? Why are you fearing, child of God? Fear is not our question. Don't worry about things in these videos to come. Just know that God restores time. So, we are not losing time during this quarantine period. But actually, we are in the, in the grave, ready for a resurrection. Remember Jesus, before he sat on the throne of God, he was in the grave. From the grave to the throne of God. So we might be isolated, but from isolation to our glory. May God bless you as you continue with your days. We will continue by the grace of God to come into your homes, to come into your ears through the name of Jesus. To preach Jesus Christ and not ourselves. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for stating unto us the mystery of time. To explain to us the assignment and purposes of Jesus Christ on earth. And even right now, Jesus Christ came that he might destroy the works of the devil. And even today, he is a destroyer. He says, I am come. Father God, we pray that you still say, I am come today. That we, Baba, we, you may overwhelm, scatter, and spoil the devil and his cows. To the glory of your name all over the world. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let all glory, let all praise, let all worship, let all honor, let all exaltation be to God. Not unto us, not unto us. Father God, I bless the whole world. I bless ESCI. I bless City of Champions Assembly. I bless our relatives. I bless our friends. I bless strangers. I bless everyone watching, hearing, and everyone not in the vicinity of this audio. That your head may stretch to them. Heal them because you are the healer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. We give all the glory to God as we are just eating vessels. May you join us once again when we fly to an advertisement for the next teaching from the heart of God. That God may continue to give us settlement as Mama has said. He doesn't give us peace as the world does. He has a special mysterious manner of giving us peace. And we joy in the great and mighty things. Shalom, shalom. Peace to you all. Amen.